I'm 50 years old. I've probably lived um, a little bit more than half of my life. I see my sister and my parents weekly. I have graduated from university, I know, eight times. I don't smoke. I, I do eat fresh veggies every day and often throw them away at the end of the week because we've bought too many. I run along the river along a gorgeous and a safe path. My family have food every day. We see a great GP and access to services. I've great teeth, but I've got a few, few fillings, um, probably from when I was young and I was too lazy to brush. We buy takeaway once a month. I don't drink more than two glasses of wine a week, most weeks. I don't drink soft drinks. I don't take drugs. I've got a full-time job that I absolutely love. My BMI is 22. I do not suffer from any chronic conditions. I take no medications and I live in inner Brisbane and this is my world. My friend lives in Queensland. He is 50 years old. He has reached the life expectancy of his community. His parents died years ago. His brothers all died in their 30s from chronic kidney disease. He is the oldest surviving person in his family. He didn't finish school and hasn't been to university and he smokes. He doesn't buy veggies. They are 11 days old by the time they get to his local store and they're often slimy and wilted and he has shown me that. Um, even though these are all grown very, very close to his home. A good diet from his local store costs $434 every week, which is half of what he gets paid. It's also 40% more than what it costs in Brisbane. His community doesn't have access to fresh food every day. In fact, one in three families in his street doesn't have food every day. His kids are unlikely to finish year, year 12. He didn't. He has diabetes. He has high cholesterol and his BMI is 45. My friend lives in far north Queensland. We are both Queenslanders and we are exactly the same age. You should all be outraged. It's not fair. In Australia, two in three adults and one in four kids have overweight or obesity. And I'm just going to say this really, really slowly because this is brand new. If obesity rates remain the same, and we all know they probably won't through COVID, children born next year, that is in 2023, will live a shorter life than their parents. Research provided to me last week showed me that at the current rate, again, the current rate of obesity, the life expectancy of these future kids is going to reduce. To, to be clear, it's not just going to stop rising, it's going to stop and it's going to decline. This has never been seen in this country before. We know that where you live affects your health. Life expectancy in Brisbane is 82 years, yet it's 51 years in, in our parts of the state's north. It's not fair. Food security is a real issue in Queensland where one, one third of those in remote regions don't have enough food compared to only 4% of everyone else. Central and North Queensland have a food insecurity score of 60% higher than that of inner Brisbane, that's where I live. Mental health is taking a heavy toll where the rate of emergency visits to, for mental health is twice, is twice as many um, as those in um, uh, remote spaces, yet services are three times less accessible. So they need more, but they have less. The pressure on our health system is extreme as admission rates have increased by 42% over the past decade. And yet they continue to, to provide an amazing service, but they are exhausted. In schools, about 40% of groups from lower SES communities won't finish year 12. 
And about half a million Queenslanders have experienced homelessness in their lives, half a million Queenslanders. And of course, we know that a third of prisoners are from First Nations communities. It's not fair. So this is nothing new to any of you. It's the way that we manage this going forward that is new. It's now and it's absolutely critical. We need a systems approach. We need to do something fast and we need to do this together. Through whole of government, through consumer-led action, through developing frameworks that ensures fairness, through real-time and relevant data, through legislation, through levers and through policies such as the National Obesity Strategy and the National Preventive Health Strategy, which we are just so keen to lead here in Queensland through and with the system. In fact, there is only way to recover from a pandemic, to prepare for another one, to solve obesity, to support food insecurity, and to close the gap. It's through a state-specific equity framework, strong, mandated, and legislated. And this is exactly what we are doing in Queensland government right now. I don't want to ever see the life expectancy gaps of 30 years again with my own friends of the same age living in the same state. COVID has helped us understand the lack of equity in our world. In Australia, we do not have a fair economy. We do not have a fair system and we do not have a fair environment. But for the first time, we are starting to understand this. And Queensland are making some impressive plans around this. Our children have the right to good health. They have the right to the life expectancy of at least what we've been afforded. Nothing less. Fairness does not mean that everybody gets the same. Fairness means that everybody gets what they need. That's from Rick Reardon.